Hello and welcome to another video by the Bearded Tech Guy. In this video, I will be going over the basic installation setup of a Z-Wave Smart Switch by GE and incorporating it into Samsung SmartThings. After setup, I will be going over how to set up a simple home automation task that will control the smart switch based on a sliding closet door being opened or closed. This automation will be configured and controlled through WebCore. Before we get started, I would like to state that I am not an electrician. While I have basic knowledge of electrical wiring, I cannot guarantee that the way I am installing or working with electrical wiring is correct or up to wiring codes and standards. If you are not comfortable working around electricity, I highly recommend not doing the switch installation yourself and instead have someone that has worked with electricity and knows what they are doing. I am not responsible for any injuries or damage created from doing any work found in this video or related to it. When working with electricity, you should always turn off power to the area you are working. To be extra safe, use a multimeter to test both the lines you are working on as well as any other lines that may be around that area to make sure there is no power on them. The first thing to do to get started is to gather everything you will need to be successful with this project. At minimum, you will need a smart switch, a door sensor, a way to attach the door sensor, and a screwdriver. For this project, I am using a Z-Wave smart switch by GE for my smart switch, a Samsung SmartThings Zigbee multi-purpose sensor, and scotch mounting putty. In addition to those things, you may also need extra wire, wire strippers, needle nose pliers, twist wire connectors, spacers, a new wall plate, a multimeter to test if your line is dead, and a smart hub depending on the smart switch and door sensor you use. Once you have everything you need, it's time to get started. For this project, I plan on having this closet light turn on or off based on if either of the two sliding doors are opened or closed. While this can be accomplished in several different ways, this way is the best for my use case. To get started, and the first step before doing any work with electricity is to locate the circuit breaker or fuse that provides service to where you plan on working. For me, I have a circuit breaker, so I will turn off the appropriate breaker. Once the breaker is off, double check to make sure that the switch you are working on no longer works. If there are multiple switches and outlets in the same box, make sure to test all of them. Just because they are in the same box does not mean that a single circuit or fuse provides power for all of them. All electrical devices and wires in the box should be tested properly before being worked with. Now that power is off and we have verified all electrical and wiring in the box has no current, it's time to remove the faceplate of the switch. For this, you will either need a screwdriver or you can use a drill with a Phillips or flathead bit on it. I personally like to use a screwdriver when working with electrical wiring to have better control over how tight something might be as well as what the tool touches. After the faceplate is removed, you will need to pull the switch from the box as well as any additional wiring. For the smart switch I am using, I require a neutral line as well as ground. Not all homes have neutral or ground run to every electrical box, so make sure that the switch you plan on using either needs neutral or not, and if your electrical box has what is required. Once your switch is removed from the wall, you will need to remove the electrical wiring from the old switch and prepare it for the new switch. For me, I will need to straighten the wires out and shorten them a little. Before installing the new switch, I'm going to add two jumper cables, one for neutral and one for ground. The switch I purchased comes with a single jumper wire for neutral, and I have a spool of solid copper wire for ground. I will use my twist-on wire connectors to have them all connected together properly. On the back of the GE Smart Switch, there are a few different terminals. There is ground at the top with a green screw, load on the top left with a black screw, line on the bottom left with a black screw, traveler on the top right which should be covered with a small piece of tape, and neutral on the bottom right with a silver screw. Ground and neutral give away what they are with their name, but load is going to be the connection going to your light from the switch, while line will be your connection going to your circuit breaker, which is also known as hot and the Traveler is used only in three-way installations. In a large number of installations, it may be very difficult to figure out which black wire in your wall is load and which is line. To determine this, you can either use a multimeter to determine which one has power, 
or you can wire up your switch and test it. If you wire it up and it does not work after turning power to the box, you most likely need to flip the two black wires. Do make sure to turn off power again if you need to do this. When ready, install the ground, load, line, and neutral wires into their corresponding terminals. I like to use the push terminals located on the back of the switch. To use them, you simply insert the wire into the terminal and then screw down the terminal. You can also simply hook your wire around the terminal and screw it down. After all the wires are securely attached to the terminals, tuck any extra wires back into the electrical box. Make sure all exposed wire ends are covered with a twist-on wire connector. Next, carefully insert your new switch into the electrical box. Depending on your smart switch, electrical box, and additional wiring, it could be a tight fit. Make sure to be careful to not forcefully put the switch in the box. It is possible to damage the wiring, the switch, the electrical box, or even the wall. Once fully inserted, you will need to screw the switch into the electrical box. After the switch is installed and screwed in, it's time to install the faceplate. I have been using the Lutron screwless wall plates, which has two layers, so I will install the first layer and then test the light switch. As long as the light switch works, I will then install the second layer. Awesome! So now that I know the light switch works, I can go ahead and install the second layer of the wall plate. I really do like the look of these wall plates compared to the normal ones. They do run a bit higher in cost, but if you plan on staying in your house for a long period of time, I think they are well worth the extra money. You could also always just move them with you if you do plan on moving, so it's something to consider if you were looking for a more modern or sleek look to your home. Now that the smart switch is installed and working, it's time to add the door sensor into the smart hub. For me, I will be using a multi-purpose sensor as well as Smart Hub from SmartThings. To add a device, go into the app, click on My Things, and click the plus icon on the top right hand corner. As long as your device is in pairing mode, the Smart Hub should take a few moments to detect the device and then start the pairing process. At this point, you can name the device. After the device is added, I like to make sure it is functioning as expected prior to installation. You will also need to follow these steps to add the smart switch to your hub. After the sensor is added to SmartThings, we will install the sensor to the door. For this sensor, and mostly all other door sensors, there are two parts, the actual sensor itself and some form of a magnet. For this installation, I will need something a lot thinner than what comes with the sensor, so I'm using a magnet that is often found in shower liners. I always make sure to take them out of old shower liners before tossing them as they are great for door contacts. While the Samsung sensor comes with double-sided 3M tape, I found it can be difficult to remove as well as damaging to both the sensor as well as whatever it's attached to. For all my indoor sensors, I like to use some form of museum putty. It's perfect for holding smaller sensors and isn't damaging to the surface they are on. Now that both the smart switch and sensor are installed and functioning as expected, it's time to move on to the fun part, automating it. For this, we will go into the SmartThings app, go to Automation, and open up the Smart Apps. Once there, we will open WebCore and add the two new devices to be allowed to be accessed by WebCore. I pretty much always forget this step until I'm trying to find the device to make a piston. Even for this video, I actually had to go back and add it in there afterwards, so make sure to do that. Anyways, to add the devices under the WebCore app, select Settings and click on Available Devices. Once there, select the devices you want to allow WebCore to access and then save. Now, under the main WebCore app, click on Dashboard and click on the menu after it opens. Under the menu, click on New Piston and then click on Create a Blank Piston. After that opens, give it a name of your choice and click Create. Inside the piston is where all the automation magic gets to happen. The automation for this project will be completed with a few if-then statements to control the light based on the status of the door sensor changing. The first if statement will be if the contact sensor closes. This is done by adding an if statement to the piston by clicking on Add a new statement under Execute. When the new window opens, click on Add an if and click on Add a condition. Select the sensor we had previously added and under Condition select Contact. After that, under What kind of comparison, we're going to click on it and select Changes to. 
that'll actually open up another setting for compared to, and we will select closed under there. After all the settings are set, click on add. Next, we will add the light control under the then statement by clicking on add a new statement under then. This will open a new window where add an action will need to be selected. In the new window that opens, select the light you want to control. When the light is selected, a new window from there will open where the command is selected. For this if statement, we will pick turn off. This completes the logic to turn the light off when the door closes. Next, we will create a new if statement by selecting add a new statement under execute, and we will follow the same steps as the previous ones, except for the contact comparison being changed to open, and for the last step, instead of turning the light off, the light will turn on. Once you're finished creating the logic for the automation rule, you will need to save the rule by opening the menu, and this is done by clicking on the hamburger menu on the top right hand corner and then clicking on save. And finally, it's the moment we've all been waiting for, testing out our new automation rule. For me, I want to make sure that both doors opening will trigger a light on, and if both doors close, triggering the light off, and then either door opening or closing. Right now I just have that one little tiny magnet on the door, so I may consider adding another one or two to the door in line, so that way if the door is opened a crack, for whatever reason, maybe it doesn't get shut all the way, but it's mostly closed or gets bumped, the light's not going to turn on and stay on. So if I add another magnet or two, it's going to give it a little longer tracked for the door sensor to be considered closed. I'm also planning on adding more automation to my house so that if I have any door open for any kind of long period of time, I'll actually get notifications on my phone. So that'll be something I'll add on later on. But even still with those, I'd much rather just have this door not trigger the light so quickly or for being open for a crack. That's it for this video. Let me know what kind of exciting home automation projects you have planned for this year in the comments below, as well as any other projects you've done or would like to see done. I love hearing about others' automation projects. If you like this video, please feel free to thumb it up as it helps the channel out a lot. And make sure to get subscribed to the channel for more great tech content that will be coming out really soon. Thank you for watching.